Welcome back to reality. Cheltenham Mental is over. And we're now on the Cheltenham Blues are gone. Sun is shining and the flat returns today. I'm Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards. And I'm just going to run through a few things before the flat starts. I'm getting a few people messaging me for saying very similar things. Um, firstly, I'll go straight to it because I want to keep this short. Um, the flat and the jumps are very, very different. The punting's different. The way the whole year plays out is different. And each bet that you place is going to be very different to what you're used to. You can get the horse coming back on the jumps and they could be first time out. But you've seen that horse's form for the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years. So you know exactly what that horse is capable of, what it'll run to on its first time back, what the trainer's saying, what the trainer targets. The flat is completely different. A lot of the horses you're looking at in Doncaster today, um, they are two-year-olds, three-year-olds, they are they are unraced, they have no, they've not even seen a racetrack, most of them. The Brockles beef, for, for instance, has got 13 runners, and the, and the favourite for it is currently priced at 10, 10 to 11. And no one knows any of the wiser, there could be a potential pocket rocket in there anywhere, yet it's still at that price. So what I'm trying to say is, you just don't want to be steaming in like you've been doing for the last week over at Cheltenham. You want to be lowering those stakes and just going out and enjoying the day. If you win a few pennies, buy a few beers, winner. You just don't want to be steaming through this. The next big aim in reality is probably Aintree in two weeks' time, which will be harder than Cheltenham, but at least you've got six months of form. And for some horses, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years worth of form. The other thing that I'll say is the easiest way of describing the flat in these early stages with the two and the three year olds is that if you go to school and you put two kids next to each other and tell them to throw a ball 20 yards, one kid will throw the ball and they could throw it in a perfect straight line, 20 yards, someone's hands, catch, bang, first. The other child might not even be able to pick up the ball. So they, they pick it up and they're not really sure and they th fumble it across the floor. You go in the next day and you ask them to do the same thing. The first child, they do exactly the same again. Perfect throw, 20 yards. The second child begins to understand it. They throw the ball and it just doesn't make it quite the 20 yards. You go in the third time and then suddenly the first child is still doing the exact same thing. They're not improving. They're not going any further. They're not throwing any faster. They're not doing anything any quicker, but they're just achieving the same. The, the, the other child that was struggling throws the same ball. However, they throw it, they can then throw it further than the 20 yards in a perfect straight line. So what I'm trying to say is all these horses are literally like young kids. They are, they are all going to improve at different levels throughout the season. And you'll get some horses that will come out on debut and they will not have a clue what is going on. And then the next time out, they'll be a completely different horse. And so what, what I'm trying to say is you just cannot steam into these sort of horses. It doesn't matter if a horse is four to six on debut um, and another horse is 10 to one because different horses react differently. Some horses at home will look like a superstar, come to the track and do nothing, whereas others will be the complete opposite. And they will all improve at different levels of the season. And the equivalent of a horse that starts out now to what a horse you'll see at the end of the summer, some of these are like exactly the same as us. I was saying with the school expression, throwing a ball, is the fact that some of them will be so much better than others come the end of the year but you can only take that progression as it comes and today is a prime example of no reason to be going steaming in like those Doncaster selections and all the horses that are run at Doncaster even horses that have got form you just can't you just can't be confident in anything um, right so the prime example of this which going further into a horse that does have form so in, in the three o'clock you have Chindit who's at least eight pounds clear on form he's got the best he's got the best form in the race but the problem is you're also you're guessing on the trainer the tra obviously the trainer's in quite good form richard hannon but and he said the horse is ready but you won't know that until the push comes to shove how ready that horse is and then he's taken on other horses that again they've had another six months on their back and the six six months doesn't sound like a lot of time but it's the equivalent of like doing dog gears so you're gaining say three or four years worth of growth in that six months in that horse's career like a young flat horse may only run from say two to about five so that, that is a massive amount. So another horse could come back, they've grown so much, improved so much, they could be 100% ready to go. And then bang, they go and do you. So what I'm trying to say is you just do not want to be steaming in. Um, bringing on to another another race of caution is the Lincoln is a brilliant race. You look back and we've had like the likes of Adabe and Lord Glitters finished 1-2 in it at one point. And obviously both gone on to be Group 1 winners. 
So the same with today, you've got uh, the two at the top of the market, Mushtaba and Modern News. These two could both be Group 1 horses potentially down the line. But if they're drawn on the wrong side of the track, if they get unlucky and run in, or they just, they just, it's just not their day, then they could end up coming, I don't know, fifth or sixth today. And another horse that's been well laid out, perfect side of the draw, wins. And But the, the winner goes on and he could go on to nothing. Whereas those two in future, they could go on to be the superstars. So the flap develops very differently in the fact that just because a horse is beaten does not mean that it suddenly loses all credibility and that next time out it can't win. That they're, they're, they're a work in progress as opposed to the jumps where you're seeing a lot of like a Willie Mullins horse wins first time out, wins second time out, wins third time out, goes and wins a supreme novice. It's, it's, it's just not the same on the flat. Um, and then going out to Dubai, um, we've got a few potential superstars, the likes of Min Minobo. Um, and f for me, Minobo, he, he has the potential to be an Ascot Gold Cup horse. But at the same time, you look at him, you think, is he only running at those trips due to the fact that they have such an embarrassment of riches, Charlie Appleby, at that, at that level? Um, with the likes of Hurricane Lane. So, whilst I've had a small bet on him to, to do to, to win the Ascot Gold Cup, it's all very speculative, rather than like on the, on the uh, jumps where you're thinking, yep, yeah, anti-post, tick, bang. Again, you're, you're lowering your stakes for the flat. Um, but um, not to put you off. And, and another thing is, you've just got to watch out for the bounce. So there's horses that run really well on what's known as... Um, Super Saturday, which was three weeks ago out in Maidan, and then they come here for Dubai World Cup night, and that was supposed to be their prep. But they run such a good race there that they then they bottom out when they race here. And Man Manobo and Man of Promise both ran absolute stormers three weeks ago. But Appleby seems to he's just become such a elite trainer that it wouldn't surprise me they run stormers there and then they run stormers again today. So it wouldn't concern me so much, but it has happened in the past, and they've had big winners all around for Dubai World Cup night. Um, and then finally, just out in, out watching these um, races out in Maidan, they're all Group 1 horses. So they're all, well, not all, but the majority of them are Group 1 level on Group 2s. So that is the highest quality of racing that we've got this weekend. But it is very competitive. And also, you've got to take into consideration the different styles and types of jockeys we've got out there. Like, I know a lot of people are used to watching English and Irish jockeys where we all ride in a certain sort of way. But... Americans do not ride like that. Like you look at a lot of their sprinters, like a prime example would be Life is Good in the Dubai World Cup. Like this horse has got stall one and it will be on the inside rail where the inside rail has been favoured all season over in um, Dubai. So he's got prime conditions and it's a front runner who pings from that first game. If he breaks clear, he will that'll be it. He'll go he'll go hell for leather and it'll be catch me if he can. The downside is the way these American jockeys ride is that they literally ride like they're in a five furlong sprint. So they will they will blast off in front and they will just hope that they can stay out there for, and for as long as possible and not get caught. So don't be frustrated when, if you've picked an American jockey, whether it's in that race, because they've got Americans have got plenty, if you've, if you've been, if in that race or any other, and they, they blast off out in front and then they just get caught because they've got no stop button. They, say they, they race very differently in America. They just blast and then they try to stay. As opposed to a lot of, obviously, you look at the English horses like the Frankels and stuff where they stay and then they use the turn of foot at the end of the race. Even if it's a five furlong or like a 10 furlong like the Dubai World Cup, they just seem to just go, run the exact same way. As fast as we can for as long as we can and catch me if you can. So you don't want to be complaining, just pick your jockeys and pick your horses according to the sort of race style that you want to have. Whereas the Japanese, they have plenty of horses that they they hold up in behind and uh, they use their turn of foot. But the problem is you get plenty of horses where um, they're, they're hostage to fortune. So what I'm trying to say is today is a day of just to just kick back, enjoy it, have a few beers and enjoy the racing. Just don't go steaming in, going mental on all your bets today. But and thinking, oh, because I've got some money. If you have got any money from Cheltenham, you can bet a stake higher and go crazy. Because we've all been there before, and it's just not what you want to be doing. Whereas, if you give it a few weeks' time, you've got Aintree. Then a few weeks later, you've got Punchestown, and then we've got all the classics: 2,000 guineas.